Hi there, this is Alison from Freddie Loves Crochet and today I'm going to show you how to make this absolutely gorgeously adorable little um, plushy dog puppy. Um, it's a really low sew make so you have to sew on the snout and the ears but other than that uh, there is no, no sewing. Um, and it's really easy to make it different sizes and different colour ways and things just by changing the yarn that you're using. So as you can see, I've got a little black and white one. Uh, this is, these have come out small. It's the same pattern, but this is a, a different type of yarn. It's a bit thinner. And this um, Frenchy sort of pug style as well here. So I'm going to show you this one. With, this is using Jelly Baby um, Signet yarn or Signet Jelly Baby yarn, um, which is a bit thicker than this one, which is a James Seabrett uh, Flutter by yarn. Um, so I'm going to take those out of the way. So I'm using this in a nice tan colour. It kind of reminds me of like a Cocker Spaniel or a, a Labrador type colour as well. So um, you're going to need... Uh, some yarn, not too much, probably around 25 grams or so of yarn. Um, so you may get about sort of four or five of these out of one skein of 100 gram yarn. Two safety eyes. I've got, I think these are 12 mil, uh, 12 uh, millimeter. So um, nice and big to match your project. I've got a safety nose. You can always sew that on if you don't have one. And this, mine is like a, a velvety finish to it, which is suede velvet, which is really nice. Um, a little bit of pink felt cut out into a tongue shape, just like this here. And ideally some hot glue, which will glue it on nice and tightly. Some toy stuffing. And you need a, um, a matching hook for your yarn. So I'm going to use a five millimeter hook for this because it's kind of uh, like a super chunky or um, weight yarn. So I'm going to use a five, um, but you, you sort of match your hook. You want to go a little bit smaller with your hook than you would with um, if you're doing a regular crochet as opposed to making little plushies around the roomy because you want it to be nice and tight with no holes. So I'm going to leave him there. Um, you may need a stitch marker, we're going to work in rounds. I use a bit of scrappy yarn, I'm not keen on stitch markers, but you do whatever's best for you. So we're going to start with a magic circle, tail end to the left hand side if you're right handed, and wrap it round so it crosses, and then hook through the back there. Pull that through the long end through to the front, and then pick up your yarn, make a tail, make a chain. So keeping it quite loose. It's quite difficult sometimes to make a magic circle with these this type of yarn. So you have to sort of keep it quite loose and put, keep gradually pulling through. Don't pull too hard on this yarn either because you will snap it. So with this time, we're going to, instead of yarning over, which you would normally do for regular crochet, for these sort of makes where you want it to be a nice tight stitch, you want to put the yarn under. So you grab the yarn and pull it under. One. And then we're just going to do two. We want six all together. These are single crochets in the US or double crochets in the UK. I want six of them. I'm just going to give a little pull to make that hole smaller as we go each every time we've done two. If you leave it until you've done six to do any of that pulling on the magic circle, the likelihood is you won't get the yarn to move and it'll all split and you'll have to start again. This is a can be tricky doing a magic circle with this sort of plushy yarn. So that's the last two of the six. So these are round one, six single crochets or double crochets if you prefer UK terms into that magic circle, pulling after each two just to make it a little bit smaller each time. Uh, not pulling too hard because you will snap the uh, yarn. It's annoying when it happens. So <clears throat> I'm going to use my stitch marker, which I use a bit of scrappy yarn to put through into there and then we're going to go from six up to twelve so we need to do two single crochets in each stitch around we're not going to join our rounds we're going to keep going in a continuous spiral so two three four 
five, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So we've increased uh, two stitches into each of those six, so we've now gone to 12. On round three, we're going to increase another six stitches up to 18. So the way we do that is we're going to do, in our first stitch, we're going to add two single crochets. And then the next stitch after that, we just put one. And then we repeat that around, so we do two in the next one. And then one, two in the next one, and then one. So we're adding six stitches to this round, going from 12 to 18. Two, and then one, two, and then one. And I've got two stitches left for the last one. Two. And then one, and you'll see that I am yarning under for the first pull through rather than yarning over. Okay, so we're starting to form. So we're starting at the top of the head and working down. Now we need to do another four plain rows with no increasing. So we're going to stick with 18 stitches and we need to go around four times of um, single crochet, which is a, a UK double. So I'm going to pause it here and I'll meet you when you've done your four rows of single crochet. So you should now have um, done your four rounds of just single crochet, um, sticking with the 18 stitches. We won't go any more than 18 in this, so make sure you've always got 18, and we're up to round eight now. So we've done the first seven rounds. So for round eight, this is where we're gonna create our the little um, front legs, so the arms there. <clears throat> And we do that using a half double crochet puff stitch. So first of all, I want you to make one single crochet in the first five stitches of the round. So that's three, four and five. And then in the sixth stitch of the round, we're going to do a half double crochet puff stitch using six stitches. So yarn over into the next stitch. Yarn over, pull through, and sort of pull it up so it's quite loose. We want to create quite a big arm. So pull it up a little bit, <clears throat> yarn over, and we're just going to keep yarning over. Hook in, yarn over, pull it back through, and we're building up here. So that's two, yarn over, hook in, yarn over, pull it through for three. And we're going to do it so we've done six. Yarn over, hook always in the same place, yarn over, pull through for four, hook over. Yarn over, pull through for five, and the last one, yeah, for six. So you can see we've got loads of stitches on there now. It's so hard to even see them with this plushy yarn. Now the next thing is to yarn over and pull through all of those stitches. Okay, try and keep that fairly tight so it gives it a nice little pop. And then we've got to, it can be quite hard to find your next stitch because this can sort of bulge over the top of it. So pull it away and find your next stitch. And then we're going to make a single crochet, making sure that we yarn under still. Sorry. Single crochet in each of the next six. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. <clears throat> Now we're going to create another um, half double crochet puff stitch to create the other arm. So exactly the same, yarn over into the stitch, yarn over, pull through. It doesn't matter really if you yarn over or you yarn under when you're picking up this loop here, don't worry. I've been yarning um, over, I think, there. So, yep. Yeah. Yarning over will give that a slightly bigger one as well. So that's three and four, pulling it up to give some space. Five, it'll make it easier to pull through as well if you do that. And the last one, six, 
yarn over and pull through all of those loops there and then we should have five stitches left um, into single crochet in the final five so one that one's a bit tricky but it's nice to keep it tight so that the puff stitch pops out two three four and five so now when you look at it turn it the right way so this is the front you can see our two arms at the side there I say arms they are arms when they're sticking up right aren't they they're front front legs okay um now it's also time to put the eyes in so as you can see we have the eyes between rows five and six so one two three four there's row five and there's row six so i've found the space in between and you want about two or three stitches in between it's up to you how you want that to look so place your stitches so one two three four five so somewhere i'll put my eye one there sometimes you need a bit of adjustment to get them in the right place i think that's about in the middle isn't it so and then you need to put your safety backs on which i don't have my i can't find the jig thing that i've got so I'm going to pause it there whilst I get these on. <laughs> okay, after much effort, they are now in, as you can see. Um, and at the moment, it looks nothing like a dog. It's the nose and the ears that, <laughs> that really um, make it. So, now you've done the row with the front legs. We're going to do another four rows, four rounds even, of... Um, just single crochets or UK double crochets all the way around so we're going to go from uh, we've got eight rounds here so we're going to do nine through to twelve of just single crochet so you can pause it here and I'll meet you after you've done those four rounds okay so you've done another four rounds underneath the arms there front legs um, and so now we're going to do the legs. Now we put the legs in a slightly different position. So the arms are a little bit wider. The legs are a stitch in, sort of narrower. Um, and we're also going to do the tail all in the same round as well. So I'm going to start off. Just move my stitch marker. We're going to start off just by doing one single crochet in the next stitch which should take us to the sort of the middle at the back of our dog then we're going to do the tail so chain eight one two three four five six seven eight if you want a longer or shorter tail you just uh, change the amount of chains and then just from the second chain from the hook you're going to work back down that chain placing one single crochet in each chain down Fiddly towards the end I've got one left there and then you say we've done one single crochet there so we're just going to carry on working single crochets um, until we get to where we're going to place our next leg so we need six single crochets now so one two three four five and six and the bottom leg so the back legs sorry are done exactly the same way as we did these so uh, they're just in a slightly different position so it's a half a six half double crochet puff stitch so yarn over hook in yarn over pull through and we're going to do that six times all in the same place so that's two three four five and six I just got to give myself some more yarn there we go and then yarn over and pull through all six making 
pull it a bit tight to make it pop and then making the next one that you do nice and tight too. So then we're going to do four single crochets before we do the next leg. So there's one, there's two, three and four. Just make sure that pops out. There we go. Sometimes they do need a little bit of help to sort of stand out. Getting, the yarn's getting all in a knot here, so I'm just untangling it. There we go. <clears throat> so, another half double crochet puff stitch in here. Yarn over, hook in, yarn over, pull through six times. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Yarn over and pull through all of those loops and we should be left with five stitches to do single crochets in. So, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so it's kind of looking more dog-like now. So, but still not quite. So we're going to do our uh, decrease round now. We're going to close this over. So we're going to go from twelve, uh, so from eighteen to twelve. Um, it's a bit trickier working around the tail. So we're going to first of all start by doing a single crochet in the very first stitch, and then we're going to have to tuck that tail out of the way, bring it forward, and find the the single crochet that was associated with that tail which can be tricky so here for me it's there but counting helps if you count sort of 18 you'll know which one um whether you you know you should be counting one or not so we're going to do the invisible decrease technique which means that you put your hook in the front loop only of the next stitch which is for this one is the one at the base of the tail find the front loop of the next stitch and pop your hook into there too don't yarn over in between that just Put the hook in that way, yarn over and then pull through both of those loops and finish off the single crochet. Uh, now we're going from 18 to 12, so the next stitch is just a regular single crochet before we do another decrease again. So front loop of the next one and the following one, front loop again, yarn, um, pull your yarn through and then complete the single crochet. And then we've got a standard single crochet then it's it can be really tricky at the back of the puff stitches to find those front loops because we've got another decrease here sometimes yes but separate them with your fingers if you need to yarn over pull it through those two loops yarn over through two then we've got a regular single now and then another invisible decrease there and a regular single, which this time it only wanted the front loop and I wanted two. There we go. And then we've got another decrease in the front loops only. And then finally, we've got one final single and one final decrease. So we've now decreased down to 12. So now it's a good time to stuff the uh, dog. So I've got some toy stuffing here. I want to stuff it pretty well. Um, it bulks it out. It actually, it stands for quite a good stretch this yarn as well. So you can sort of stuff it quite firmly and it not be stretched too far. But it just position your eyes within that stuffing as you go. Need a fair amount to be honest. Okay, you can always sort of top it up um, just before you finally close over. Let's just reposition those eyes again. Okay. Gonna do one final little bit there. Okay, so now we've got the final round to do of the main body. 
again make sure you're quite careful with this yarn it will split and fluff everywhere if you're not so we're going to now do invisible decreases all the way around so we're going from 12 stitches down to six so every stitch needs to be a decrease so working in those front loops again in every stitch around so there's one two three, four, five, and the last one is six. There we are. Okay, so now we're going to trim the yarn, leaving a fairly decent amount to be able to sew with, but not too much about that will do and grab a darning needle you're going to need quite a chunky one for this sort of yarn um, so we just get rid of my stitch marker we just fasten that off and pull it back through this is where it does get really fluffy because the the ends here will lose fluff and if you pull too tightly with this it will start to shed so we have to go quite gently with it so we're just going to close that hole over if you wanted to add any more stuffing now is the time to do it see I've already got bits of fluff everywhere <laughs> so you're just going to go into front loops I do two at a time so there's one there's two and then just give it a little pull there's one and there's two and a little pull and again it's shedding and then another last two one and two and give it a little pull there we go so it's all completely closed over now you just want to secure that tail end in the so i go in a few times in and out the good thing about this yarn is with it being so thick and chunky it tends to sort of, once you sew it in, it just doesn't move. It stays in position. So it's pretty good for that. And there we go. So there's the first bit. So we've still got a bit of a way to go, but you can see now that we are getting there. So now we're going to do the, the snout here. And um, it's just one round and it's all worked into a magic circle. So <clears throat> just like when we did the magic circle to start, we do have to take it easy and pull um, th like through slowly every couple of stitches. So going to start with a magic circle and a chain one okay and we want it to have a slightly oval shape so we're going to go we're going to do two single crochets or UK doubles so there's one two and because I've done two stitches I'm just going to do a little pull and hopefully it works There we go, it almost didn't. <laughs> then to make it a bit oval, the next stitch you want to do um, two half double crochets, which is a half treble in the UK. So yarn over, hook in, yarn over, pull through. So you've got three and yarn over, pull through all three. And we're going to do that again. And then you pull through all three. And then another little pull just to make sure it's still moving. There we go. And then we need to do another two single crochets all into the same hole of the magic ring. So there's one and two. And then finally, the hole is tiny, but I can see where it is. But I'm glad it's got to that stage because I think it was going to get a little bit stuck there. So um, we're going to finally do two half doubles in there. One and two so it gives it that slightly oval shape and then just do a slip stitch to the top of that first single crochet that you did to join it into a nice circle and then give a final little pull gently of the tail ends to close it over okay so ideally i think i prefer the shape with this tail end at the bottom um, we're going to trim that one really short for sewing on as well but we'll keep the long one at the bottom for sewing so we've got our nose 
I put it through the centre of the magic circle because to me it's quite it's quite secure. If your centre of your magic circle isn't as secure as, it, as you'd like it to be, um, then you might need to find a diff slightly different position to put that. Just find the back. I'd lost the back of it, but I've got it now. And let's see if I can get this on without having to pause. <laughs> So let's see. Squeeze that on. I must find the jig thing that I've got. And then you may just need to give it a little squizzle round if it's not quite in the right position. But there we go. Perfect. So you've got the little nose there. And then as soon as, look how much this transforms. So it just looks like a weird little creature. We put a nose on it and we start to see a dog. So you're then going to sew it. I trim this one really short so that it just hides in there. You can you can darn that in if you want, if you want it to feel more secure. I'm happy with how it is. And then when you sew it, you just kind of want it to stick out a little bit. So it's like a little snout. So you're just going to get your tail end and go in and out all the way around the edge there. So I'll let you pause it whilst you sew that on there and we'll do the ears. So there we go, it's all sewn on. And I've obviously got fluff everywhere. As soon as you start to trim this yarn, it fluffs. But then once you've got rid of that, it's fine. It's just the trimming. So now what's left is the ears. They are super simple to make. But it's just a case of magic circles again. So like before, we need to be careful with our pulling through. So magic circle chain one. And we're just going to place six single crochets into this magic circle so one two and let's give it a little pull after two there we go three four five little pull again and then two more five and six and then one final pull tightly and then you need your stitch marker because there's another round this time all we're going to do is uh, do two single crochets in each stitch around so we're going to increase from six to twelve one two three four five Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Now, just to finish off, because it gives a little bit of a ridge and we want like a perfect circle, I'm just going to place a sing a slip stitch to where that the, the stitch marker is. I'm going to place a slip stitch in there just to round it off and stop there being any sort of ridge. So leave a tail end long enough to sew it in, cut that and then yarn over pull through. So make another one of those, make another one of those and then this uh, end from the middle of the ear, darn that in and then um, I'll let you pause it here whilst you make another one, darn those in and then I'll show you how to position them and shape them to the head. So you should now have your two uh, ears, just little discs like this. So as you can see here, what I've done is sewn them on, but I've pinched them slightly at the top there just to give that um, ear shape. You can do other sort of shapes with them as well if you wanted, um, you know, a flatter ear, kind of more like this where I've got them flat. It looks quite cute as well. Um, they aren't pinched. And then we've got some very pinched ones there that give that nice doggy ear shape. So the way to do that is, I'm just going to put my... So before you sew it, kind of fold it in half, more fluff, and then literally just at the top where you've folded it and pinched it, just put 
go in and out a couple of times and you can see it just gives it that shape there. Place it on the side of the head in a position that you want. I go for somewhere around, it's got kind of around round three. You might want them higher up or lower, depending on the style of dog you want to do. And then you're going to just go in and out. So making sure that you, apologies for going off the screen there, catch both the ear and actually in the head as well. So make sure you're not just catching one of them to get it in nice and securely. So in and out, in and out. And again, don't pull too hard because you will lose it. This yarn does not like, it's very fragile in some ways. Okay, that's so cute. So once it's secured on, I'm just gonna darn in and out a couple of times there. This is where it gets so fluffy. And trim that down. Apologies for going off screen. It can be quite hard to do that and see where I am on the screen at the same time. So we do the same on the other side. So I'll let you do that. And then we've just got the little tongue to finish off with. So I've got the ears sewn on. Isn't it so cute? Just look at it. It's so easy to make, but so cute. And then you just need to, I like this going off to the side like that. So you could put it wherever you want, if you want a, a little tongue at all. In that position, uh, using fabric glue or hot glue gun or something like that, uh, making sure it's securely fitted on there. And there you have it. There is your 30 minute plushy dog. I hope you've enjoyed doing this pattern. Please let me know in the comments if you have. I'll also be adding um, a written form for free on my blog website, which is www freddy-loves.com you'll also find all the links down in the video description please do subscribe for more um fun cute interesting videos coming soon thanks all for watching bye bye now